Hello, welcome to another big science. I wanted to talk today about homeostasis, which is one reason why I'm so far away from the camera. The concept of homeostasis crops up in biology, obviously, but it also crops up in cybernetics. I've been meaning for a long time to make connections between cybernetics and herbalism, so I'm hopefully going to do that or move towards that in this video. The word homeostasis is means Firstly, there's the word homoios, homoios, which is the Greek word for the same. It's cognate with the word same because h turns into s, in uh, s turns into h in Greek. So, for example, you've got um, well, the word homoios meaning the same, and stasis as in stand, state. So, homeostasis is the process of something attempting to keep itself in the same state, which can be achieved in various ways. Now. A mechanical example of that would be a thermostat. A thermostat is a device, invented by my family as it happens, which keeps itself at the same temperature. Because as it heats up, for example, the biometallic strip thermostat, which is not the only kind, but it was the kind that was invented by my lot, um, it will lose contact with the, um, it, the currents going through it. It's got two strips, it moves away, bends because one expands more than another when it gets hot, loses contact, and therefore starts to cool down again, contracts again, comes back in contact with it, and so forth. Um, another one is the spinning round governor thing that you get at the top of uh, valves on um, steam engines. So that spins round, pulls it out, that pulling out opens the valve, that then releases the steam, spinning slows down, collapses again. And we are like that as well. Now, we are trying to keep ourselves in balance. So, if I do that, I, my vestibular um, organs are become aware that I am going to be teetering to one side or another, and so various things happen to my foot and other parts of my body, muscularly speaking, that keeps me in the same position. And so that's a very simple example of homeostasis in that I'm trying to keep myself here in the same state of standing upright. But obviously, this is a fairly unsubtle way of doing it. There are other examples of homeostasis which make a lot more sense. There are, in fact, hundreds, probably, examples of homeostasis in the human body. The attempts that we have to keep ourselves in the same state. One really obvious one is temperature. If it's too warm in this room, and unfortunately it isn't, even though it's quite near the middle of summer, what will happen is uh, organs in my hypothalamus will detect that my body temperature is rising, and the result of that will be that they will bring blood to the surface of my skin, vasodilation, the blood vessels in the surface of my skin will get wider, let more blood through so that that can radiate heat out into the external environment, um, and there will be sweating. Uh, so sweat glands will open, water will appear on the surface of my skin, that water will evaporate, take in the heat with it, and cool me down. And various other things will happen, such as behaviour, which involves the removal of clothing, to make sure that my body stays at a temperature at which the physiological processes can occur safely within it. Now, <clears throat> suppose it then gets really cold. What's going to happen is, uh, sim this is simplified because it's not exactly what happens, the blood vessels on the surface of my skin will contract because they want to protect the core of my body, the temperature of the core of my body. So that pulls the blood into the central part of your body, and that obviously can go too far, for example with Raynaud's syndrome, uh, but also with frostbite, in that the blood is just not getting there and it just cools down anyway, and you've got damage, and also with hypothermia, which is where the homeostasis is fading. And um, other things will happen as well, like there will be involuntary shivering behaviour, and that will warm things up, and I will also engage in other kinds of behaviour, such as the conscious decision to put more clothes on. So that's, this is the process of homeostasis as realised in both behaviour and physiological activities in the human body. And so, there we are back in the state of warmth. Now, I mentioned the question of water there, in that uh, sweating is going to stop if you get too cold, but it's gonna, you're going to sweat more if it gets too hot. 
which brings up the question of water, the water economy in the body, basically how much water can go in and go out. Now, as far as the kidneys are concerned, the kidneys can detect, or the body can detect when the uh, concentration of um, solutes in the body fluid is rising. When it rises, the hypothalamus detects that it's risen and it will start secreting a hormone called ADH or vasopressin, that's antidiuretic hormone, diuresis is the production of urine, uh, which will communicate with the kidneys and tell the kidneys to start absorbing more urine back into the body so that you don't lose as much fluid. You'll also become thirsty and you'll engage in fluid seeking behaviour. So I might go and find something which is going to quench my thirst and drink it, thereby increasing the amount of liquid in my body and diluting it further so that the processes can carry on. Now, that sometimes goes wrong. Um, if you're in a hot environment, whereas you will sweat at first, your kidneys will then adjust and change. And you may notice also that you tend to urinate more in the winter than you do in the summer because you're losing less water from the surface of your body because you're sweating that less. And also, if there's too much water in your body, then your kidneys are going to try and excrete more and your urine will become lighter, paler, more like ordinary water because it needs to get rid of that. Now, that sometimes goes wrong, and this is very important from the point of view of health, because this is an illustration of basically the main reason that people get ill, which connects directly to herbalism. The, um, there are conditions where the kidneys won't be working properly. Firstly, the cells in the kidneys that reabsorb water are quite specialised, and it's quite difficult if there's damage to the kidneys for the healing to produce new cells of that type. So what it tends to do is it tends to produce cells that are not, are not all good at absorbing things. So what happens is the kidneys are basically organs that reabsorb water. They're not really organs that filter water out. They do that as well, but that's not their main function. Their main function is to reabsorb it uh, because basically all the body fluid in your body goes through your kidneys all the time and gets turned into urine and then reabsorbed. That's constantly happening. Um, if the, there's kidney damage, for example from kidney stones or from an infection, what can happen, or from your immune system attacking your kidneys, what can happen is the epithelium, the cells that are supposed to reabsorb it, will actually change into a less specialised form, it won't get as good at reabsorbing. So you end up with a fixed low specific gravity stage where you produce fairly dilute urine all the time and you have to keep drinking. Another situation is diabetes insipidus. The pituitary secreting ADH, antidiuretic hormone, I'm trying to point to the centre of my head basically, that's what I'm doing there. Um, pituitary uh, can sometimes not secrete enough antidiuretic hormone or not pick up on the signal that it's supposed to uh, secrete it. And so the kidneys never slow down with their excretion. They never start to reabsorb water properly enough. So what happens in this situation is you end up constantly urinating, constantly dehydrating, and of course there was a case recently where this wasn't known about and it happened in hospital and somebody died of thirst because of that. So clearly that's very important. Now there are a whole load of situations where the body can go wrong in so many ways it's basically a miracle that we're ever healthy. Um, and the crucial difference between most healthy people and most unhealthy people is that the healthy state, the homeostasis, is the state which is stable. It's like at the bottom of a valley. The unhealthy state is an unstable state, so it will drift further and further away from health because there's a feedback mechanism that's going too far or a feedback mechanism that isn't working. Feedback being a crucial concept in cybernetics, which you can see in, for example, the thermostat bending away and bending back towards. That's an example of feedback. And so, most unhealthy states are unstable, which means that it's easier to nudge them back into health or gradually move them back towards health. Most healthy conditions are stable and therefore they like, tend to stay in that state. And what you're trying to do when you're trying to make somebody healthy, the idea is moving them from the unhappy valley into the happy valley. So you have to push them up the hill and drop them down into the healthy valley where they're likely to stay. 
So that's a basic summary of what homeostasis is about. It is on the IGCSE biology syllabus, but it's in general a very important point about your body. Um, it's what the endocrine system is doing, basically, but also the immune system, and as you've seen, the musculoskeletal system, which does that sort of thing. So basically, very important, body trying to keep itself into a, in a stable state. To be honest, it's not entirely stable, but that's another another subject for another video. So that's it for now. If you like this video, please rate it up, comment and subscribe. If you dislike it, tell me why so I can improve. And I really welcome the people who have given me some feedback recently, actually. I really appreciate that. Thank you for that. Um, and I'll um, see you tomorrow.